Hello again. I'm feeling pretty excited. But to explain why, I'd like to go back in time to several months ago. My studio isn't much. Just a collection of inherited, purchased, and handmade treasures, and an assortment of tools and materials to use when inspiration strolls by. But this space is constantly shifting, and the excitement comes when I uncover new ways to use it and refuel my passion for creation. We moved the bookshelf out of the studio, and it opened up the space significantly. It's given me an opportunity to showcase both old and new members of my family of dried florals. Actually. A few days before we moved the shelf, I'd stumbled across this gorgeous bunch of flowers, brought them home, and put them in an old wine bottle. As beautiful as they were, I really had no place to put it, it being so grand. But that was before we moved the shelf. Now, I had the perfect place to put it. In this spot with the warm glow of the studio lights weaving through the tangles of branches and tiny flowers, I found myself intrigued by this delicately scented bouquet. What was her story? I was so taken in by the charm of this new corner of the room that I decided to take some photos to add to the archives. Maybe I could use them later. I've been wanting to try doing some still life exercises, and as this little flower often appears in many of my dried floral arrangements, it seemed only natural to start here. But I still want to know more. Time to get to work. I cracked open my toolkit and set my mind on the task at hand. Let's see. Where are you? Hmm. So many flowers. Look at all these shapes, all these hues. There are about 369,000 known species of flowering plants, but here she is. Oh wow, that's a lot of detail in this dreaded blank page. Where do I even begin? How can I capture the essence of this dainty flower? What if I ruin this page in my journal? What do you call a snobby criminal walking down the steps? Well... I'll approach this case the same way I would any other. With patience, love, and modesty. And as we embark on this journey together through art, what new discoveries will we unlock in this episode of Sketchbook Diaries? Today I thought it would be nice to talk about the struggle. Because I'll tell you this for free, the struggle is real. <laughs> I've always found it difficult to motivate myself to start working on a project. I find that I build up the excitement for it in my mind. And in all the anticipation, I'm thinking of all the creative ways that I could make the vision come to life. But once the tools are laid out, and that blank canvas is in front of me, there's a twinge of reluctance. Doubts begin to creep in, and suddenly the only artwork I can remember are my worst pieces, the ones that I never even bothered to finish because I mentally resigned from the process of making art. But fighting through the struggle is what makes us stronger, more determined, and more confident that we can survive if we brace and endure. Through the years, art, in various forms, has been one of the few things that always comes back to me. It is very much a part of who I am, and without it, I find it much harder to connect with people. But I find that the struggle isn't as intense to get started, because I've embraced a willingness to fail. I'm allowing myself to make mistakes, to struggle through a bad sketch or painting, if only to see what I can learn in the process. I've decided to refrain from removing any pages from this journal, no matter how bad the outcome. I wonder what story this book will tell when it's all finished.
A willingness to fail is a willingness to learn. A firm resolve to stay the course, even as the pages turn. Just focus on the outcome, not only what you see, but also what's inside of you and what you'll come to be. You're stronger now, you know, though not invincible. You've put perfectionist aside to see the principle. When doubts start creeping in, just as they always do, you mix it with some pigment, and it makes a vibrant hue. No matter what the challenge or obstacle or test, you've found release in making things and giving it your best. It's not what you can gain or what it is you make. It's not about the money or the chances that you take. A smile, a tear, a hug, a laugh, a reminiscent sigh. The joy creating brings to them is your number one why. So turn the page once more and go make something new. And don't be scared to make mistakes, just 'cause you can't undo. This was easily my favorite part of the page to work on. I really enjoyed studying all the nuances and details of these little, tiny branches and petals. I tried to be looser than I usually am, only highlighting details which I thought might help communicate the subject clearly, without overcomplicating it. I liked adding these nice thin. Dark outlines to the branches. Something about that made me really excited, and I just love that illustrated aesthetic. It so much, I decided I wanted to highlight it by adding a bit of color to it. These are watercolor pencils I picked up years ago from Michaels. They do come in handy now and then.
Thanks for staying until the end of the video. I really have a lot of fun putting these together for you. And every like, comment, and subscription to my channel is another indication that for someone out there, this is either entertaining or relaxing or some combination of those things or something positive in somebody's life and makes me all the more... It makes me all the more grateful for the ability to share these things with you guys. So I look forward to the next time we meet. And speaking of next time, let's visit the animal kingdom together. What's your favorite animal? I have a few that I could name and many that I know nothing about. I'd like to tell you about one of my favorites. No, it's not this fella, although he is pretty cute. I'll give you a hint, he's related to this guy. See how it all comes together, next time.